and welcome to the Big Bang. In today's show... Hold your breath for the strange but true story of Robert Hooke. He did and made a great discovery. Plus, build your own Big Bang rocking racing robots. And we answer another big question. Yeah, and pigs might fly. But first, a trick. Violet, uh -huh. I want you to blow this bottle of water over. Oh, here we go. OK. <gasps> Nice try. Gonna work. What's that for then? Hey, well, try knocking it over with that. Okay, yep. I could knock it over like that. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Yeah. <laughs> You're having a laugh, aren't you? A balloon that goes <laughs> always gets a laugh. You're right. No, you can blow it over with a balloon, right? All you have to do is put the balloon underneath. And if you get the air pressure right, this is called pneumatics. Watch this. <gasps> Exactly. Well, I've got a trick for you. Yes. Using this photo of a guy who looks a bit like you, but with big hair, really, doesn't he? Yes, he does look a bit <laughs> like me, yes. OK, I'm going to dunk this photograph in water without it getting wet. No! Find out the photo's fate at the end of the show. No! Yes! <laughs> Watching this bottle is hypnotic. You just chill out and enjoy watching the boat bobbing up and down on the waves. It's made from a mineral water bottle, half full of oil. Now, you can use vegetable oil, but baby oil's better because it's clearer and it smells nicer. And the other half of the liquid is just water with food colouring in it. Now, the ship is made of cork. We all know cork floats. We don't actually want our cork to float as well as that. So, get someone to help you carve a ship shape out of cork and make sure there's a little hole in the bottom. Then paint your ship and push in some weights. I've used metal nuts. And then for added weight, use a bit of modelling clay because you can add more and take away more modelling clay just to get the weight precisely right. Now pop that into some water to see if it just skims the surface of the water. That's about right. You can see how it works if I pour in some baby oil. Look, because water is denser than oil, the water stays at the bottom and the oil floats on the top. So the ship is just sandwiched between the water and the oil. And the other thing the oil does is slow down the waves. If it was just water, they'd be frantic. But with the oil there, they're nice and gentle. but true story is about this guy, Robert Hooke, who found all living things fascinating. Oh, organic stick management. Oh, marvellous. Pigment pump. Now, milk in the form of a gas. Now, that's a good yes, he was a bit of a batty brain box. Oh, look at that. Hooke was a skilled artist and he knew more about springs than you'd ever want to learn. It goes boing. But what interested him the most was what makes living things tick. Back then, people suspected that living things needed air, but no one had ever proved it. Arp. So, Hook built an airtight chamber and got a friend to pump out all the air. As the air was sucked out, he started to feel faint. Mm. And his ears popped so badly he was dead for days. But he had proved that all living things couldn't function properly without air. Well done. Five o'clock. Hook was also a top astronomer, but everyone was spotting things with telescopes. He was getting bored with comets, planets and other big stuff. Telescope, schmelescope. <laughs> comets are ten a penny. I'm going to do something else. So instead, he decided to look at small things using a newfangled invention, 
I got myself one of them there new fangled microscopes. He started by looking at things that were just lying around the house, like bits of cork. Grapes are laggy. Corks full of little tiny rooms. And socks. Oh, great. Oh, now that is fantastic. Hook sketched everything he put under his microscope, producing the most incredibly detailed drawings. There you go, young lady. That's what's on your head. Ah! For the first time in history, people could see what the tiny living things around them actually looked like. From dog fleas to head lice, Hook's microscope drawings revealed previously unknown creatures in all their gory glory. People were disgusted, so disgusted, that Hook's book, Micrographia, became a huge bestseller. But Hook's greatest legacy was the name that he gave to the little tiny rooms that he found in Cork. Thanks to his work, we now all learn that every living thing is made up of cells. So, even though Robert Hook seemed bonkers, he actually wasn't loony at all. Oh, no! Ding, babe! <laughs> In lane one, diode slicer. In lane two, electro crusher. Slowbot ears ready. Three, Three two, one, one. activate. Go on, diode slicer, not so fast. Electro crusher, put the brakes on. Come on, there's no hurry. Oh, that's right, she's getting out of here. Brilliant. Electro crusher, <laughs> not going to beat you. Be <laughs> Take your time, lad. Take your time. No, Electro Crusher, no! Slow down! <laughs> we are having a slow bot race. It's the last robot to the bottom who is the winner. The first one there loses. Oh, you won that time. <laughs> now, you can make yourself a slow bot like this, but for that, you'll need to join me in the slow bot construction zone. Now, the most important part of your slow bot are the legs or the feet. Now, they're made from one of these. It's a plastic plant pot plate. You can find them in uh, gardening stores. Now, you'll need to mark out your plate into triangle sort of pie shapes. You'll actually get eight of them out of uh, one plate, which is enough to build two robots so you can actually have a race. Uh, now, get someone to help you cut them out if you're not very good at cutting plastic. Then, take two pieces Put them back to back and glue them together. Make a hole in the top, which is just big enough for a pencil to go through. Then take a pair of uh, cotton reels and glue them in position over the hole, like that, till you're left with something that looks like this. Then do the whole thing over again, so you've got a front and a back foot. Then take a pencil, Pass it through the uh, cotton reel, out the other side like that. Then take one of these things. It's a lolly stick, it's slightly narrower than a pencil, and pass that through the other cotton reels on the other foot. Then you'll need to cut out a couple of pieces of card like this. Two holes, one hole which is big enough for a pencil to go through, and the other hole which is just big enough for the lolly stick to go through. Then place that over the pencil and the lolly stick. Do the same on the other side. Now this is a really important bit. Make sure that the whole thing is lined up nice and straight so when your robot walks, he walks in a straight line. Now glue the cardboard plates to the cotton reel which has got the pencil through it but don't glue the cardboard plate to the cotton reel, which has got the lolly stick through it. So, when you finish gluing, you've got one bit which is nice and solid, and the other bit which is nice and floppy. Now, the body of our robot is actually a milk carton, one of these plastic varieties. All you have to do is slice the top off, 
Then make these sort of V-shaped grooves on either side. You can see on both sides, so that the body just slots over the leg part of your robot like this. And then if you want, you can turn it over and put a bit of tape across the bottom to make the whole thing nice and solid. Then decorate your robot so he looks suitably technological. I'm using lots of black and yellow tape on mine. But your robot won't walk yet. No, he needs power. And all robots, of course, are battery powered. But you can use flat batteries. All you need are four old batteries and tape them together, then tape them to the side of your robot that's got the floppy leg. That's the back like that. Tape them round about there, and now your Slowbot's ready to walk. Your Slowbot walks because he works like an upside down pendulum. You start him off tipped back at the top of a ramp, and then when you let go, he rocks forward on his front leg, and then his back leg catches up, and the weight of the battery pack makes him rock back, and the whole process starts all over again. Now, you'll need to experiment a little bit with the angle of the ramp, the alignment of the feet, and the position of the batteries, but if you get all those three things correct, your robot will take a casual stroll down a slope. Time for a rematch? Absolutely. Slowbot ears ready. Three, three two, two, one, activate! <laughs> oh, I thought he was going to fall on his face then. What's the hurry? <laughs> Look, she's got away from us again. The champion. Today's big question. Can pigs fly? All kites fly for the same reason. It's just like an aeroplane wing. As the wind travels over the kite, the wind is travelling more quickly on this side, so it creates low pressure. However, on this side of the kite, you've got high pressure, and that's what makes a kite fly. Most kites have a frame which bends in the wind to keep the kite stable. This framed kite doesn't look like it'll be able to fly, but it's still got flat surfaces, so it still generates lift, so it'll still fly. Or you can even put a frame on a crane. Meet Rodney, the red-headed crane from China. He was built by a master craftsman over 30 years ago. But he's still flying like a young'un. Here's the funny thing. A kite doesn't have to have a frame. This one doesn't. It relies on the wind blowing into these cells here. That inflates the kite, and that's what gives the kite its shape. With soft kites, you can build anything you like. The sky's the limit. So, the answer to today's big question, can a pig fly? Of course it can, as long as it's a kite. Ah, <laughs> oh, Gareth, just in time to see this picture get dunked. This is so cruel. No, it isn't, because I'm going to completely submerge it in water, but it won't get wet. OK. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's OK, cos I'm going to put it in the glass and then the glass goes in the jar of water and then cos there's so much air in the glass, then the water can't get in and when you take it out... <laughs> look, put it out, it's bone dry. Yeah, it might be bone dry, Violet Berlin, but that's not my favourite picture of crumpled <laughs> up. <laughs> no, it's OK, cos I've actually got another picture of the same guy. Oh, I tell you, what, you don't see Gaz Top on TV these no, days. You, you wonder don't. what happens yeah. to him, yeah. yeah. but I'll make it get wet again. No, you're not crumpling that one up. Oh, yeah. <laughs>